for two population of proportions, and we mentioned that uh, the assumptions are uh, for the first sample, n times pi should be at least 5, and also n times 1 minus pi is also at least 5. The same for the second sample, n2 times pi 2 is at least 5, as well as n times 1 minus pi 2 is also at least 5. Also, we discussed that the point estimate for the difference of pi 1 minus pi 2 is given by p1 minus p2. That means this difference is unbiased point estimate of pi 1 minus pi 2. Similarly, uh, p2 minus p1 is the point estimate of the difference pi 2 minus pi 1. Uh, next, we uh, also discussed that the board estimate for the overall proportion is given by this equation. So B dash is called the board estimate for the overall uh, proportion. Uh, X1 and X2 are the number of items of interest in the two samples that you have in one, uh, one and two, where N1 and two are the sample sizes for the first and the second sample respectively. Uh, the appropriate this statistic in this course is given by this equation. Uh, this score, this statistic, is the point estimate of the difference by 1 minus by 2 minus the hypothesized value under F0, I mean if 0 is true. Most of the time this term equals 0. Divide by this quantity is called the standard error of the estimate which is square root of b dash, 1 minus b dash times 1 over n1 plus 1 over n2. So this is your z statistic. The critical regions, I'm sorry, first, the appropriate <coughs> null and alternative hypothesis are given by three cases we have. Either two-tail test or one tail, and it has either upper or lower tail. So for example, for lower tail test, we are going to test to see if a proportion one is smaller than a proportion two. This one can be written as by one smaller than by two under H1, or the difference between these two population proportions is negative, is smaller than zero. So either you may write the null alternative as by one smaller than by two, or the difference, which is pi 1 minus pi 2 is smaller than 0. Uh, for sure, the null hypothesis is the opposite of the alternative hypothesis. So if this is one pi 1 smaller than pi 2, so the opposite is pi 1 is greater than or equal to 2. Similarly, but the opposite side here, we are talking about the upper tail probability. So the, under the alternative hypothesis, pi 1 is greater than pi 2. Or it could be written as by 1 minus by 2 is positive. That means greater than 0. While for the two-tail test, for the alternative hypothesis, we have by 1 does not equal by 2. In this case, we are saying there is no difference under H0. And there is a difference should be under H1. Difference it means either greater than or smaller than. So we have this not equal sign. So by 1 does not equal by 2. Or it could be written as by 1 minus by 2 is not equal to 0. It's the same as the one we have discussed when we are talking about comparison of two population means. Yes. We just replaced these pi's by mu's. Finally, the rejection regions are given by three different charts here. For the lower tail, tail test, we reject the null hypothesis if the value of the test statistic fall in the rejection region, which is in the left side. So that means we reject a zero if this statistic is smaller than negative zero alpha. That's for lower tail test. On the other hand, for our tail test, your rejection region is the right side. So you reject the null hypothesis if this statistic is greater than zero alpha. In addition, for two tail test, there are two rejection regions. One is on the right side, the other on the left side. Here, alpha is split into two halves. Alpha over two to the right. Similarly, alpha over two to the left side. 
Here we reject the null hypothesis. If your disease statistic falls in the rejection region here, it, it, that means Z is smaller than next to Z alpha or two, or Z is greater than Z alpha or two. Now this one, I mean the rejection regions are the same for either one sample t-test or two sample t-test, either for the population proportion or the population mean. We have the same <coughs> rejection regions. Sometimes we replace Z by T. It depends if we are talking about small samples and sigmas unknown. So that's the basic concepts about testing or hypothesis testing for the comparison between two population proportions. And we stopped at this point. I will give three examples, three examples for testing about two population proportions. The first one is given here. It says that is there a significant difference between the proportion of men and the proportion of women who will vote yes on a proposition? Now, in this case, we are talking about a proportion. So this problem tests for a proportion. We have two proportions here because we have two samples or two population spheres, men and women. So there are two populations. So are, we are talking about two population proportions. Now we have to state carefully null and alternative hypothesis. So for example, let's say that phi 1 is the population proportion, proportion of men who will vote for a proposition A, for example. For both, yes. For both, yes, for proposition A. For a proposition A. And by two is the same, but for of men, of women, I'm sorry. So the first one for men and the other of women. Now, in a random, so in this case, we are talking about the difference between two population proportions, so by one equals by two. Again, your alternative hypothesis should be, since the problem talks about is there a significant difference Difference means two tails, yeah. so it should be pi one does not equal by two. Pi one does not equal by two. So that's step one. State null and alternate hypothesis. Now, in a random sample of 36 out of 72 men and 31 of 50 women indicated they would vote yes. So, for example, if x one represents number of, we, of men who would vote yes. That means x1 equals 36 in 172. So that's for men. Now for women, 31 out of 50. So 50 is the sample size for the second sample. Now it's ask about test this test about the difference between the two population proportion at 5% level of significance. So alpha is given to be 5%. So that's all the information you have in order to answer this question. So based on this statement, we state null and alternative hypothesis. Now, based on this information, we can solve the problem by using three different approaches. Critical value approach, B value, and confidence interval approach. Because we can use confidence interval approach because we are talking about two tail test. So let's start with the basic one, critical value approach. So approach A. Value. Now, since we are talking about two tail test, your critical value should be plus or minus z alpha over two. And since alpha is five percent, so the critical values are 
z plus or minus 0.25, which is 1.96. Or you may use the normal, the standard normal table in order to find the critical values, or just if you remember that values should be different. So the critical regions are above 1.96 or smaller than negative 1.96. I have to compute the z-statistic. Now, z-statistic is given by this equation. z stat equal b1 minus b2 minus, minus pi1 minus pi2. This quantity divided by b dash 1 minus b dash multiplied by 1 over n1 plus 1 over n. Here we have to find b1, b2. So B1 equals X1 over N1. X1 is given. 36. So 36 out of 72, that means 50%. Similarly, B2 is equals X2 over N2. X2 is 31 over 50, so that's 62%. Also, we have to compute the pooled estimate of the overall proportion. So B dash, sum of the two x's divided by the total sample sizes we have. X1 and X2, 36 plus 31, 72 plus 50. So that means 67 over 152, 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 0
men and women. That's for using critical value approach. Before we continue, we have to discuss the confidence interval for the difference pi 1 minus pi 2. Uh, the confidence interval, as we mentioned before, can be constructed by point estimate plus or minus critical value times the standard error of the point estimate. In this uh, case, the point estimate for pi 1 minus pi 2 is b1 minus b2. So that's your point estimate. Uh, plus or minus z alpha over 2. Now, by, from the uh, information from chapter 8, the standard error of the difference, b1 minus pi 2, is given by this equation. b1 times 1 minus b1, so b1 and its complement, divided by the first sample size, plus the second sample proportion times its complement divided by the sample size of the second sample. So that's your confidence interval. So it looks similar to the one we have uh, discussed for the mu1 minus mu2. In that one we had uh, x1 bar minus x2 bar plus or minus z or t, it depends on the sample sizes, times s squared b, s squared b times 1 over n1 plus 1 over n2. Anyway, the confidence interval for pi1 minus pi2 is given by uh, this equation. Now let's see how can we use the other two approaches in order to test if there is significant difference between the proportions of men and women. I'm sure you don't have this slide for computing b-value and grit and confidence interval. Now, b-value approach, part b or approach b, b-value. Now, since we are talking about two tail tests, your p value should be the probability of z greater than 1.31 to the right and smaller than negative 1.31. So, my p value in this case equals z greater than 1.31 plus z smaller than negative 1.31. Since we are talking about the two tail test, so there are two rejection regions. My Z statistic is 1.31, so it should be here 1.31 to the right, and negative. Now, what's the probability that the Z statistic will fall in the rejection regions, right or left? So we have to add B of Z greater than 1.31 and B of Z is smaller than negative. Now the two areas to the right of 1.31 and to the left of negative 1.31 are equal because of symmetry. Yes. So just compute one and multiply that by two, you'll get the B value. So two times, now by using the concept in chapter six, easily you can compute either this one or the other one. The other one directly from the negative yes. Z score table the other one, you should have the complement 1 minus equal to z. It's smaller than 1.31. In either way, you will get this result. Now, my p-value is around 19%. Always, we reject the null hypothesis. If your p-value is smaller than alpha, then always we reject the null hypothesis. If my p-value is smaller than alpha, alpha is given. 5%, since B value equals 19% is much bigger than, much greater than 5%, so we don't reject the null hypothesis. So my decision is we don't reject at zero. So the same conclusion as we reached by using critical value. So again, by using B value, we have to compute the probability that your Z statistic falls in the rejection regions. I end with this result. My B value is around 19%. As we mentioned before, 
we reject the null hypothesis, if my b value is smaller than alpha. Now, my b value in this case is much, much bigger than 5%, so my decision is don't reject the null hypothesis. Any question? The other approach, the third one, confidence interval approach. Now for the confidence interval approach, we have this equation, B1 minus B2, this is again the point estimate, plus or minus Z, square root B1 times 1 minus B1 divided by N1 plus B2 times 1 minus B2 divided by N2. Now we have B1 and B2, so 0.5 minus 0.62. That's your calculations from previous information we have. Plus or minus Z alpha over 2, the critical value again is 1.96, times square root of B1, 0.5 times 1 minus 0.5 divided by N1, plus P2, 62%, times 1 minus P2 divided by N2. 0.5 minus 62% is negative 12, 12%, plus or minus the margin of error, this amount, is, again, as we mentioned before, is the margin of error, is 0.177. Now, simple calculation, will end with this result. That is, the difference between the two proportions lie between negative 0.296 and 0 0.57. That means we are 95% confident that the difference between the proportions of men who will vote yes for a proposition A and men equals negative 0.297 up to 0 0.57. Now the question is, since we are testing it's zero, by 1 minus by 2 equals 0. The question is, does this interval contain 0 or capture 0? Yes. Now, since we start here from negative and end with positive, I mean the lower bound is negative 0.297 and the upper bound is 0 0.057. So 0 inside the interval, I mean the confidence interval, contains zero in this case, so we don't reject the null hypothesis because maybe the difference equals zero. So since this interval does contain the hypothesized difference zero, so we don't reject the null hypothesis at 5% level. So the same conclusion as we got before by using critical value approach and B value approach. So either one will end with the same decision. Either reject or fail to reject, it depends on the test itself. That's all. Do you have any question? Any question? So again, there are three different approaches in order to solve this problem. One is critical value approach, the standard one. The other two are B value approach and confidence interval. One more time, confidence interval is only valid for two-tailed tests. Because the confidence interval we have is just for two-tailed tests, so it could be used only for testing about two-tailed tests. As we mentioned before, I'm going to skip hypothesis for variances as well as ANOVA test. So that's all for chapter uh, 10. But now I am going to do some of the practice uh, problems. Chapter 10. So practice, uh, let's start with some practice problems for chapter 10. Uh, table D. A few years ago, BIPS invited consumers to take the BIPS challenge. Uh, consumers were asked, were asked to decide which of two sodas 
Coke or Pepsi? They preferred an applied taste test. Pepsi was interested in determining what factors played a role in people's taste preferences. One of the factors studied was the gender of the consumer. Below are the results of the analysis comparing the taste preferences of men and women with the proportions depicting prefer uh, preference in or for Pepsi. Uh, for males, size of 109. So that's your N1. And the proportion for males is around 4 to For females, N2 equals 52. And the proportion of females, 25%. The difference between proportions of men and women, or males and females, is 0.172, around 0.172. And this statistic is given by 2.118, so approximately 2.12. Now, based on this result, uh, based on this information, question number one. To determine if a difference exists in the test preferences of men and women, give the correct alternative hypothesis that Pepsi would test. B. Why B? So the correct answer is B. B. So that's incorrect. C. Why? Why C is the correct answer? Exactly. Because why is not equal? Because we have difference. So since we have difference here. So it should be not equal to. And since we are talking about the proportions, so you have to ignore A and B. So A and B should be ignored first. Then you either choose C or D. C is the correct answer. So C is the correct answer. That's for number one. Part two. Now suppose Bipsy wanted to test to determine if males prefer Pepsi more than females, using the test statistic given, compute the appropriate p-value for the test. Uh, let's assume that pi 1 is the population the proportion for males who prefer Pepsi, and pi 2 for females who prefer Pepsi. Now he asked about, suppose the company wanted to test to determine if males prefer Pepsi more than females. females. Using, again, the test statistic given, which is 2.12, for example, compute the appropriate p-value. Now, uh, let's state first H0 and H8. So what should I write? H0. H1, uh, by 1 minus by 2, more than 0. By 1 minus by 2 more than 0. By 1 minus by 2 is greater than 0. So smaller, smaller, smaller. Because it says that males prefer Pepsi more than females. By 1 for males, by 2 for females. So I should have by 1 greater than by 2, or by 1 minus by 2 is positive. So it's upper tier. Now, in this case, my B value gets probability Z more than Z more than Z star. So around this value is around 2.12.
1 minus b of z is smaller than 2.12. So 1 minus, now by using the table or the z table we have, since we are talking about 2.12, 212, I'm sorry, 212, 212, so the answer is 983. So 1 minus 893, so the answer is 017. So my B value equals 017. So A is the correct answer. Now if the problem is two-tail two test, it should be multiplied by two. So the answer, the correct should be B. So you have A and B. So if it is one tailed, your correct answer is A. If it is two tailed, I mean if we are testing to determine if a difference exists, then you have to multiply this one by two. So that's your B value. Any question? Number three. Suppose Babs wanted to test to determine if meals Females, a preferred Pepsi less than females, using the statistic given, compute the product B value. Now, H1 in this case, B1 is smaller than by 2. By 1 is smaller than by 2. Now, your B value, Z is smaller than, because here is smaller than, my statistic 2.12. Be careful, we don't write negative sign. Because the value of the statistic is 2.12. But here we are going to test lower tail test. So my B value is B of Z smaller than. So smaller comes from the alternative, well, this is the sign under the alternative. And you have to take the value of the Z statistic as it is. So B of Z is smaller than is 983. So D. If you got A correct answer, D is the correct. If B is the correct answer, you will get 9966. Nine, 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 six, six. That's incorrect answer. Any question? The correct is D. Number four. Suppose that the two tail. Now, for example, forget the information we have so far for B value. Suppose that the two tail B value was really 0, 0734. Now, suppose my B value for two tail is 0734. That's for two tail. This is my B value. This is my B value. It's 0, 0734. Now, we have four answers. Part A. B, C, and D. Which one is the correct? A it says at five percent level, there is sufficient evidence to conclude the proportion of males preferring Pepsi differs from the proportion of females preferring Pepsi. Which one is the correct answer? B value is 0, 0.734. B it says at alpha equal 10 percent, there is sufficient evidence to indicate the proportion of males referring to the difference from the proportion of females referring to C at 5%, there is sufficient evidence to indicate the proportion of males referring to Pepsi equals the proportion of females referring to Pepsi. And D, at 8% level, there is insufficient evidence to include, to indicate the proportion of males referring to Pepsi differs from the proportion of females referring to Pepsi. Again, suppose that here it's two tail test. It says two tail test. Two tail means by one does not equal by two. So in this case, we are testing by one equals by two against 
by one is not by two. And your B value is 0734. So which one is the correct answer? B. 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 D. 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 Let's look at D. Let's look at D. Uh, since B value is smaller than alpha, since it means we reject. Insufficient means we don't reject. So this is incorrect. This is correct because here there is insufficient. Since we, if we reject. It means that we have sufficient evidence to support the alternative. So D is incorrect. Now what's about C at 5%? 5. So this value is greater than 5. So we don't reject. So that's incorrect. B. At 5, at 10% now, there is sufficient evidence. Sufficient means we reject. We reject since this B value, 0, 07, is smaller than alpha. 7% is smaller than 10%. So we reject. That means you have to read carefully. There is sufficient evidence to include, to indicate the proportion of males preferring Pepsi differs from the proportion of females. That's correct. So B is the correct state. Now look at A. A at 5%, there is sufficient evidence? No, because this value is greater than alpha. So we don't reject for this one. Here we reject because at 10% we reject. So B is the correct answer. Make sense? Yeah, exactly, for 10%. If this value is 5%, then B is incorrect. Again, if we change this one to be 5%, still this statement is false. It should be greater than in order, it should be smaller than alpha in order to reject the null hypothesis. So the, uh, B is the correct statement. Always, insufficient means you don't reject the null hypothesis. Now for D, we reject the null hypothesis at 8%. Since this value 0, 0,7 is smaller than alpha, so we reject. So this is incorrect. Now for C, be careful. At 5%, if, this, if we change this one a little bit, there is insufficient evidence. What do you think? About C. If we change part C as at 5%, there is insufficient evidence to indicate the proportion of males preferring Pepsi equals. You cannot say equals. Because this one, maybe yes, maybe no. You don't know the exact answer. So if we don't reject the null hypothesis, then you don't have sufficient evidence in order to support each one. Not zero. So don't reject the zero, as we mentioned before. Don't reject the zero does not mean, does not imply if zero is true. It means the evidence, the data you have, is not sufficient to support the alternative evidence. So don't say equal to. So say don't reject rather than saying accept. So B is the correct answer. Six, seven, and eight. Construct 90% confidence interval. Construct 95, construct, construct 99. It's similar. Just the critical value will be changed. Now my question is, which is the widest Confidence interval in this case, 99. The last one is the one widest because here 99 is the largest confidence level. So that means the width of the interval is the largest in this case. If 
for 5, 6, and 7. The question is construct either 90%, 95, or 99 for the same question. Simple calculation will give the confidence interval for each one. My question was which one is the widest confidence interval? Based on the sea level, 99% gives the widest confidence interval comparing to 90 and 95%. Uh, the exact answers for five, seven, five, six, and seven. So, uh, five, zero, five to thirty percent. For ninety-five percent, zero, two to thirty-two percent. For ninety-nine, negative zero, three to point thirty-seven. So this is the widest, because here we start from. 5 to 30. Here we start from lower than 5, 2%, up to upper or greater than 30, 32. Here we start from negative 3% up to 37. So this is the widest confidence interval. Number six. Number six. Five, six, and seven are the same, except we just change the confidence level. Z. So here we have 196 instead of 164 and 2.578, so 76. Next, read uh, table E. randomly selects 150 salespeople and finds that 66% who have never taken self-improvement course would like such a course. So currently, or a recent study, it says that out of 150 salespeople Find that 66% would like to take such course. The firm did a similar study 10 years ago. So in the past, they had the same study in which 60% of a random sample of 160 salespeople wanted a self-improvement course. So in the past, in 2160, and the proportion is 60%. The groups are assumed to be independent random samples. Let pi 1 and pi 2 represent the true proportion of workers who would like to attend a self-improvement course in the recent study and the past study respectively. So suppose pi 1 and pi 2, pi 1 for recent study, and by two for the past study. So that's the question. Now, question number one. If the fair wanted to test whether this proportion has changed from the previous study, which represents the relevant hypothesis? Again. The firm wanted to test whether this proportion has changed from the previous study, which represent the relevant hypothesis in this case. Which is the correct? A is the correct answer. Why A is the correct answer? Since we are talking about the proportions, so it should have by. A change means does not equal to. So A is the correct answer. Now B is incorrect because why B is incorrect? Exactly because under H0 we have by 1 minus by 2 does not equal 0. Always equal sign appears only under the null hypothesis. So it's the opposite here. Now C and D talking about 
RTL or low RTL, but here we're talking about two TL tests. So A is the correct answer. This state, this sign null hypothesis state incorrectly. Because under H0 we should have equal sign. And for alternate it should be not equal to. Number two. If the fair wanted to test whether a greater proportion of workers would currently like to attend a self-improvement course, then in the past, currently, the proportion is greater than in the past, which, represent, which represents the, relev uh, the relevant hypothesis. C is the correct answer. Because it says a greater proportion of workers would currently, so by one, greater than by two. So C is the correct answer. It says that the firm wanted to test whether a greater proportion of workers currently, currently, a study or recent study by one represents the proportion of workers who would like to attend the course. So that's by one. Greater than in the bus. So it means by one is greater than by two. It means by one minus by two is positive. So the alternative is by one minus two, by two is positive. So this one is the correct answer. Exactly. If, if here we have what in the bust should be, B it should be the correct answer. That's two, uh, three. Any question for going to number three? Any question for number two? Three. What is the unbiased point estimate for the difference between the two population proportions? B1 minus B2, which is so straightforward calculation gives A the correct answer. Because the point estimate in this case is B1 minus B2. B1 is 66. Percent, B2 is 60%, so the answer is 6%. So B1 minus B2, which is 6%. I think 3 is straightforward. Number 4, what is or are the critical values which, when performing, as it test on whether population proportions are different at 5%. Here, yes, we are talking about two tail tests, and alpha is 5%. So you, my critical values, there are two critical values, actually. Alpha over two, and alpha is 5%. So plus or minus. 196 by using the standard tables. B is the correct answer. Five. What is or are the critical values when testing whether population proportions are different at 10%? The same instead here we have 10 instead of 5%. So A is the correct answer. So just use the table. Now for the previous one, we have 0 to 5, 0 to 5. The other one, alpha is 10%. So 0, 5 to the right, the same as to the left. So plus or minus 1, 6, 4. So 4 and 5 by using the Z table. Well, I, 
alpha with zero. So exactly, since alpha here is one zero to five, so the area becomes smaller than, so it should be z greater than. So one point nine six, the other one one point six or five. Number six. What is or are the critical value when testing whether the current population is higher than? Higher means upper. Upper tail. Upper tail, 5%. So which? B. 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 B is the correct. Z alpha, 1, 6, 4, 5. So B is the correct answer. Seven. Seven and eight we should have to calculate. Number one, seven. What's the estimated standard error of the difference between the two sample proportions? We should have the standard error. Square root b dash one minus b dash multiplied by one over n one plus one over n two. And we have to find b dash first. Let's see how can we find b dash. B dash equal x one plus x two. Now what's the value of x1? Exactly. Since b1, x1 over n1. So that means x1 is n1 times b1. So n1 is 150 times 60 percent. So that's 99. And similarly, x2 into which is 160 times 60 percent gives 96. So your B dash is x, x, uh, x1 plus x2 divided by n1 plus n2, which is 150 plus 10. So in B dash first, the full estimate of overall proportion. So 99 plus 96. Let's just be there. Six to nine. Six to nine. So this is not your answer. So just be there. Now take this value under square root of six to nine times one point six to nine multiplied by one over n one, which is one fifty. Plus one six. That's your standard error. B dash is not standard error. B dash is the bold estimate of overall proportion. Now simple calculation will give C. So C is the correct answer. A D. I'm sorry. A eight. What's it? What's the, again, here he ask about what's the standard error of the difference between the two proportions given by this equation. Here first we have to compute P dash by using X1 plus X2 over N1 plus N2. In this example, the X's are not given, but we have the proportions. And we know that B1 equals X1 over N1, so X1 equals n1 times b1, so I got 99. Similarly, x2 in 2 times b2, it's 96. So b dash is 6 to 9. So plug this value here, you will get 0, 5, 5. 8. What's the value of the statistic to use in evaluating the alternate hypothesis that there is a difference in the two population proportions? So we have to compute Z's score, Z stats, which is B1 minus B2, which is 6% minus zero. minus zero, divide by this amount. 
zero five five. Now zero six over zero five around one. Six over five, so the answer is one. Zero nine. So that's my Z statistic. That's number eight. So the answer is C is the correct answer. So straightforward calculations for C and D gives C correct answer for both seven and eight. So C is the correct for each one. Now nine. Nine, the company test to determine at 5% level of significance whether the population proportion has changed from the previous study. Has changed, it means we are talking about two take this. Which of the following is most correct? So here we are talking about two tail test. And keep in mind, your Z statistic is 1.093. And again, we are talking about two tail test. So my rejection regions are negative 196, critical values I mean. So the, crit the critical regions are 1.96 and above, or smaller than one, minus 1.96. Now, my Z statistic is 1.03. Now this value falls in the non-rejection region. So we don't reject the null hypothesis. So don't so ignore A and C. So the answer is either B or D. Now let's read B. Don't reject the null and conclude that the proportion of employees who are interested in self-improvement course has not changed. Has not changed. That's correct. Because we don't reject the null hypothesis. It means there is no significant difference, so it has not changed. Now, D, don't reject the null hypothesis and conclude the proportion of employees who are interested in civil has increased, which is incorrect. So, B is the correct answer. So, again, since my Z statistic falls in the non rejection region, we don't reject the null hypothesis. So, either B or D is the correct answer, but here we are talking about non or don't reject the null hypothesis, that means we don't have sufficient evidence to support that there is significant change between the two proportions. So there is no difference. So it has not changed. It's the correct one. So you have to choose B. So B is the most correct answer. Now 10, 11, and 12, talking about constructing confidence interval 99, 95, and 90%. It's similar, and as we mentioned before, 99% will give the widest confidence interval. And the answers for these are for 10, 11, for 10 is negative 0, 0.8 to 20%. For 11, 0, 0.5, negative 0, 0.5 to 17. For 90%, negative 0 theory to 0.15, so this is the widest confidence interval, which was for 99%. So similar the, 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 as the previous one we had discussed. So for 99, always we get the widest, the widest confidence interval. Any question? That's all. Next time, shall we start chapter 12, chi-square test of independence.